things now. Uh, request you all to mute your mic so that uh, if the recording, like many a times during the recordings, people cannot hear many a times because of the background noise. So I would request you all to mute your mics if you haven't. Apart from that, if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, request you to just write it down or keep it in your head. Um, after every topic, once it's finished, I'll be uh, keeping like you know some time for taking your questions so you can ask me then. So I'll share my video. Okay, so today we have all meeting to know as to the ingredients in skincare. We, the reason you might be here is either because you might be using skincare products or you might be making one or you are interested in to make one. Now this is suitable for everyone because when it comes to skincare, it is the ingredients that make up your skincare products. Uh, I have been in this field like herbalism. I'm an herbalist as well. Apart from that, my main area of focus area is into skincare. So the science of herbs, uh, adding to the science of skin is what I teach and what I do. But uh, when during this five years, like it has been five years and during this five years, I realized there's lots of misconception, misclaims. There are, in fact, wrong claims sometimes that has been taking place, especially after the surge of Instagram and all of the social media after the lockdown and people started using like, you know, different making different skincare products right at home, this trend went up. And after that, the misclaims, the misinformation is nowhere. Right now, I feel there's only 10% of the actual truth out there. 99% uh, of everything is just uh, wrong claims that have been made or um, there is gap between the truth, the right information, and what is actually what we are using as a skincare product or to take care of our skin. So in today's webinar, we are going to like you know D like uh, we are going to solve these myths, myths one like you know one by one. I have a few which I would want to share it with you all. Just give me one minute. Many people are not able to join. I'll just Many people are not able to join in, so I'll just share the link to them. Okay, sorry about that. So in today's webinar, I am going to like, you know, debunk some of these myths, some of these misclaims, and you're going to also understand as to what exactly your products are made. Trust me, it is really very easy Trust when it comes to the ingredients. Now, when you look at your products ingredients, first of all, in the chat, how many of you all look at the ingredients while you buy the skincare products? Just type yes or no, or if you have anything more to say. How many of you all look at the ingredients? So Vaishnavi says yes, Deepika says yes, always. How many of you get confused, like, you know, Trust me, I am just going to share the small screen. Uh, okay, I cannot share the screen. But when you look at the ingredients list, don't you get intimidated? Like there are so many ingredients out there. Like, you know, when I, before before getting into this, I used to feel like it's a, it's a rocket science altogether. Deepika says earlier, used to be confused. Now, no, many of them. Exactly. Now, once you get into this, we realize that okay, all of these ingredients, like, you know, uh, phenoxy stands for a preservative or sodium benzoate stands for preservative and everything. But still, how many of you might feel that all of these ingredients are required? Like, you know, because this entire product is made up of so many ingredients, I at least always thinking what are those ingredients which are actually going to work on my skin? Like, you know, whether do I require, does my product does actually require so many of the ingredients? So today we are going to debunk all of these things and we're going to realize that your ingredients, your product, take any product to that matter, from gels to uh, creams, lotions, serums, 
we're going to talk about serums as well that it is not a product actually but uh, balms lip balms take any product they are made up of only four major categories of ingredients all your products are just made up of four types of ingredients so we going to check these types and all of your ingredients are, for, are going to fall either in one category or in two of them or in all of them but it is just four types of ingredients that is required to make up your skincare product so the first type of ingredients are your foundational ingredients now foundational ingredients are those ingredients that give a base to your product for example oil and water take any product to that matter whenever you look check your ingredients list the first few of the ingredients would be the carrier oils the vegetable oils or other different oils not the essential oils uh, mind you essential oils are not basically oils they are some volatile uh, ingredients that are termed to be as oils but not essential oils this is the carrier oils like coconut oil rosehip seed oil argan oil sunflower oil all of these oils the oils the carrier oils or water or and water all of your products will have at least one or all of them like either oil or water or both of them it is because they provide a foundation you can add other ingredients to this many of the ingredients we cannot use directly onto our skin many of the ingredients require something else to be solubilized in and that is the reason why oil and water provide a great base to add other ingredients and also it helps in spreadability it helps like you know all of these are easy to spread onto our skin apart from that oil and water when we look at our skin science both of them are really very necessary for our skin as well for its smooth functioning as well so the first ingredient the first type of ingredient are the oil and water which provides a base which are known as foundational ingredients then comes actives now if you are making a skin care product or if you are using a skin care product that product has to solve a particular problem right without any reason you won't be applying anything either you might be having an oily skin or acne skin or you might be having a dry skin and to solve that pro problem you are using a product the actives are those ingredients that are going to help you solve that particular problem so most of your product almost all, all of your products will contain these actives now these actives are at very less percentages when you look at your ingredients i'll show, show you how do you even read your ingredients list but it is only in the minimum amount of percentages that you will find these actives in your skin care ingredients like essential oils extracts water extracts oil extracts co2 extracts all of these ingredients are very used in a very small percentage even many a times less than 1% is also they have been used in our skin care product but they claim that you know for example green tea extract based shampoo or green tea extract based lotions and creams but when you look at the ingredients list you can find out that it is only at 1% or below one less than 1% is what that extract has been used now for these herbs for these extracts to be um for them to work on to our skin they need to be at a higher ingredient but they are expensive you uh, it increases the cost of the product and that is the reason why they use it at a very less percentage however when it comes to natural herbal uh, i won't say organic but the claims that we are going to learn about it the actual thing that works on a product even what these days companies uh, claim to be the herbs that they use the plants that they use are going to solve a problem so majorly actives are basically when it uh, are the herbs or the plants that are being used in the skin care product is what helps in solving your skin care problem then comes aesthetics whenever you are buying a skin care product you you can you yourself can take the example of yourself you the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to smell that product or you're going to uh, not even see the texture you are going to smell that product 
and many a times people buy the product based on the smell you cannot even use it sometimes uh logo branding packaging is the first thing that is going to attract that is where the marketing comes into picture and when you are using it you're just smelling the first thing and that based on that smell also many a times people buy the product so aesthetic is how does your product look and how does your product smell so it comes looks and smell essential oils are the most natural ingredients that people use uh, to claim it as natural as well and also uh, to give it a nice smell however parfum p a r f u m or uh, fragrances are other ingredients that are used in our skin care products when it comes to uh, giving that uh, smell to that product but it is the aesthetic ingredients that give the look and feel to your product now the fourth type of ingredient is functional ingredients let me all tell you one thing okay first let me finish on what are functional ingredients and then i'll come to that functional ingredients are those ingredients that do not work for your product per se do not work for your skin per se but they give stability to your product they add a uh, shelf life to your product for example for, for functional ingredients they are your emulsifiers surfactants preservatives solubilizers waxes gelling agents when you look at them these ingredients give body to your product these ingredients increase the shelf life of your product these are the ingredients which are generally man made now there's a uh, this functional ingredients is what is i would say a recent thing chelators uh, rakshan ms sakshanda has asked what are chelators i'll come to it what are chelators so we'll also write chelating agents so emulsifiers are those ingredients to mix oil and water together we all know that oil and water do not mix well so emulsifiers are those ingredients that help in bringing oils and water together surfactants are those ingredients that give you that foam whenever you are using soap or whenever you are using a cleanser you get that jag you get that bubbly thing you get that foamy thing it is because of the presence of the surfactants in any cleanser be it shampoos conditioners body wash face wash any ingredient that gives you that jag any any product that gives you that bubbliness any product that helps you in cleaning your skin will always contain a surfactant that also not one surfactant you have two to there are four types of surfactants which is like based on their charges positive charge negative charge no charge and depending on the ph ph you have the two different charges so uh, there is a combination of the primary surfactant and the secondary surfactant so not your product won't contain just one surfactant it will contain lots and lots combination of different surfactants all together then comes preservatives preservatives are those ingredients if ever any product that contains water will always have a preservative i will come to it when there is a claim which is said to be preservative free that is absolutely untrue i'll come to it when i will will be debunking all of these myths and all but any product that contains water or which is exposed to water for example in our bathrooms and all we usually keep our skin care products in our bathroom um products like scrubs or mask which might not contain water but can be exposed to moisture or water will also contain preservatives so any product that contains uh, water or is exposed to moisture will contain a will have a preservative then comes solubilizer again very important i have seen uh, in like products like toners spritzers mist face product like you know which just contains water and essential oil that is just really you are harming your skin more essential oils do not mix with water you as when you if you just add a little bit of essential oil on water you will see that there are layers of that oiliness that is formed on the water 
now either you have to shake it always before using that water plus essential oil based mixture or we use a solubilizer solubilizer helps in solubilizing that entire essential oil with your water and it is easy and safe to use if you are not using a solubilizer if the companies are not using a solubilizer if there is just water and the layer of essential oil then when you use it either you will get a too much of essential oil which might dry up your skin which might prove really very harm to your skin like essential oils we cannot use it directly on to our skin it is always supposed to be added in oil majorly if it's added with water you always have to use a solubilizer and when too much of essential oil is used on you that product will only contain less percentage of essential oil and that product will not be as effective as it is supposed to be so a solubilizer is always used whenever there is water based product and essential oil is used if you cannot find a solubilizer in that water based product and uh, essential oils chances are you are harming your skin or you'll have to always shake it before using then comes waxes now usually waxes just help you to thicken or harden your product whenever you are making balms lip balms or um, normal base balms and everything so it is just that these waxes help you to harden and thicken your product so that it is easy for you to carry it is easy for you to use it it just has a very little bit of like for example beeswax and all have a little bit of properties of emollients onto your skin but majorly it is used for just hardening and like solidifying your oils it does not it is not used as emollients per se then gelling agents whenever you want to make a gel gels are basically um the whisk the when you have water water have chances to spill you cannot use water that easily like you cannot take it easily and that is the reason why gels come into picture gels basically make your water uh, clumped up in a way they become more whisky uh, viscous in a way so it becomes easy for you all to carry and it also easy for you to apply on to your skin so normal gel let me tell you will come come to it on aloe vera gel and all but uh, it's those kind of gels that are being used in a skin care product but all of these ingredients do not give any anything to your skin the the way it's supposed to work for example if you are buying a product that product has to work on to your skin and it is those actives only that are present into that product is going to work on to your skin not all of these ingredients then comes chelating agent now um i won't go too much into science but if you know the concept of atoms and molecules and ions so there is uh, all of these these ions have charges like even below atoms so first we have atoms this is like an atom of uh, say for example oxygen then you have two atoms of oxygen which is said to be o2 then you have molecules which is your water when two hydrogen two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen you add together it becomes a molecule then two or more than two atoms come together it becomes a molecule now if there is atom is free flowing if when it is not mixed with each other when it is not complemented with another atom then it is free flowing now this free flowing uh, atom will have either negative charge or positive charge these are called ions now more in most of the skin care product natural when we are using natural products natural ingredients many of times these there are free flowing ions like these which are either positive or which are charged basically and these charge might come in middle when we are making a formulation many of the ingredients are also base charged base for example surfactants gelling agent either they are uh positively charged or they are negatively charged so some of them like some of these ions are free flowing into our skin care products and they might uh decrease the properties of our product they might not harm our skin they might just reduce the properties of our skin care products it our skin care products might turn yellow and because of this to reduce that thing we add a chelating agent these chelators just like you know give one extra molecule to this this charge is like gone and then this is nullified so whatever charge is made up of it gets nullified 
and thus it saves your products from like reducing properties and also turning it yellow. So this is the chelating agent uh, ch or the chelators as we call as. So all most of your product, in fact, all of your product, I would say is made up of all of these four ingredients, foundational ingredients, which are oil and water, actives, the ingredients that work onto your skin, aesthetics, ingredients that give look or majorly the smell and the color to your product. And then finally, the functional ingredients, ingredients that help in preserving your skincare product that gives the texture, the viscosity and all of those things. Now, here is the thing. You get even like when you are looking at your products, you will have five like in market every day. Let me tell you this. Every day, 15,000 different ingredients are registered by different companies. There are thousands of emulsifiers. There are thousands of preservatives that you can use. Different companies use different preservatives. But in the end, they are going to be just doing that same work of preservatives. Many a times, this the reason why I'm saying this is I get too many questions is like, you know, uh, ma'am, I'm using GeoGuard Ultra, ma'am, I'm using Escagard Peg. But uh, in this formulation, um, they have like, you know, this formulation calls for sodium benzoate or like, you know, some other different preservative or Germol Plus. It is okay for you to substitute a preservative within that preservative's limit. And it is okay, for example, if one formulation calls for emulsifying wax, if you do not have emulsifying wax, you can substitute it with other different emulsifier. It is going to do the same job. The thing is, we have so many ingredients, so many in, uh, ingredients registered under these categories that it becomes confusing. Even when you're reading the ingredients list, you might realize it is not the emulsifier that I had read in somewhere else but it might be doing the same job. It is just another brand's thing. For example, in medicine, you know, you have a generic medicine and then you have different brands claiming for that medicine. For example, paracetamol. Paracetamol is a generic medicine uh, in a way, but then you have paracetamol of Crocin, you have paracetamol of the, like, you know, different brands per se. Crocin is a brand name, but paracetamol is a tablet's name. Similarly, even here in this functional ingredients per se, this is a common name, which is like these emulsifiers and all. And then you have brands claiming the different um, products under their name. Now, when you look at them, here is again another second elevation when I would, which I would like love to share it with you all is, you can actually take care of your skin just by using foundational ingredient actives and aesthetics. Functional ingredients are majorly man-made. This is what you find it in nature. Carrier oil, natural. Actives, the herbs that you use are all natural. You find it in your nature. Aesthetics, essential oil, you find it in your nature. There are herbs that gives you color. You might even when you are taking care of the skin, many a times aesthetic also does not make sense. Like for you, the skincare is more important rather than how does it uh, smell and how does it look like, right? So this is majorly what I say is um, consumerism, consumerism and why consumerism. Now, these functional ingredients, all of these ingredients, when you look at their backstory, they were not present during like my grandmother's time. Before that, all you had to do is like, you know, have oil infusions, water infusions or different herbal extracts. And they used to just take care of that. It is only during World War I and World War II because of the demands that were there needed for soaps and for all of these products. That is where your, like the recent medicine that came into picture, the modern medicine, the antibiotics and all. And this is the time when surfactants came into picture. And when the surfactants were invented, the surfactants, solubilizers, emulsifiers, surfactants are the same uh, family. So when all of these were invented only during the World War I and World War II is when the new products, the skincare industry that you see today has been like what it is like. Before this, before the surfactants were not invented, people used to just take care of their skin by using natural means. And 
this consumerism has uh, made us related to buy mass, like, you know, make mass products before based on your skin, based on your lifestyle is what you used to choose the herbs, your grandmom and your like, you know, your mothers also, fathers also, they used to choose herbs based on their body. Even Ayurveda and other different old sciences, all of these, it depends on body to body, person to person. But this all changed in the last century and wherein the mass production came into picture. And when in mass production came into picture, all of these ingredients were um, invented so that, you know, a person can store the product for a longer time. Uh, a person can clean the product in a much more better way. It's like some of the uh, inventions are good enough, but most of them can be like, it's not necessary for you all. You can actually take care of your skin by just using water, by just using oil, the herbs that you find in your kitchen and in your garden, and uh, the essential oils that you can like, you can just keep some of the essential oils which are suitable for you and your family. And you can take care of your skin just by that. All of these products are when all of these ingredients, the functional ingredients, just add stability to your product, just had uh, that texture and viscosity. And almost most of the ingredients in your skincare product, somebody asked me the fillers. These are the fillers. You They will add more of like, you know, um, there's something called thickeners as well. Sorry. Thickeners are like steric acid, cetyl alcohol. They make your product more thick per se. So all of these ingredients are said to be fillers. Like, you know, in, whenever we write a formulation, we write up to 100%. Like if I want to make a product, first I'll write down as to in 100 grams, how many of these ingredients and at what uh, grams I'm going to add them. And almost all of these ingredients fill up like, you know, 20%, 30% uh, of surfactants, solubilizers, gelling agents, that only fills up most of 60 to 70% of your product. Then actives are just only used between 1 to like 0 0.5 to 1% only. So you are giving, you are ripping away your skin from the actual properties that has been used by adding all of these ingredients just to increase the shelf life of your product, just to give you that little bit of convenience that you have. And you might keep using that product, like, you know, you might keep needing that product again and again, like two months, khatam ho gaya, let me buy more. So this is what happens when you're buying skincare products. So this uh, ends with my first topic, which are the four categories of ingredients. I hope you have understood this. I have a few questions over here. I'll read them till that time. If you have any questions, you can just drop it down. So I'll uh, answer them as well. So uh, why companies, uh, Tasneem is asking why companies use four types of surfactants, uh, three types of emollients, five types of actives. That's a great uh, question, Tasneem. So when it comes to choosing these ingredients, four types of surfactants. Now, when whenever people are using surfactants or whenever the surfactants are chosen, they are either primary surfactant and secondary surfactant. Primary surfactants are majorly negatively charged surfactants, also known as anionic surfactants. Anionic surfactants give a much better power in cleansing. They foam much better. Now, we all have this notion that if there's too much of foam, that means uh, the product is working better or that means like, you know, I am cleaning my skin. That is unfortunately not true. But to in order to cater that particular perception of people, people uh, there's an ionic surfactant use. But an ionic surfactant is really very irritating to the skin. When you look at the science of surfactants, it rips away the oil, the natural oils that is created by our skin. It tends to rip away that also and our skin becomes more sensitive, especially when it comes to dry skin and all. So people add another different two types of surfactants, which are anionic or, uh, sorry, which are non-ionic or amphoteric surfactants to reduce down the irritation of the negatively charged surfactant, which is the anionic surfactant. So in a product, you will find two to three different kinds of surfactants. Now, uh, emollients, some emollients are basically, when we look at, again, there's a huge science, I won't get into it, but some in some emollients, emollients are basically oils and butters, which help in soothing and uh, like, you know, making your skin, give, it gives the oil, the oiliness to your skin. So emollients are majorly used for dry products, dry skin products. 
Now these emollients basically uh, give uh, they add as a skin barrier to your skin. There is something called skin barrier onto your skin, which is made up of dead skin cells, and these dead skin cells are held by lipids. And that is when your lipids are missing is when you have dry skin, a part of the reason. And when of the to add like uh, to give that emolliency, we add two to three so that some of the oils stay in that particular uh, like barrier. And then there are something called occlusive agents that creates a layer on top of your skin to give that extra protection. Five actives, now again, I'll be coming to it later on. So I'll answer this question as to why one product can have actives. But there is again, um, if you would have seen many products contain many types of preservatives. Before what used to happen is one preservative was only able to, so, uh, like it was only strong against one type of microorganism. For example, uh, sodium benzoate is just known for its antibacterial properties. But when it comes to microorganisms, there are so many types of microorganisms that can harm your product. So you require preservatives which are broad spectrum. That means those preservatives can, are able to kill most of the types of microorganisms. And that is the reason why in earlier times, you used to find two to three types of preservatives so that one preservative can kill one type of, like one preservative is antibacterial, another preservative is antifungal, another preservative helps in killing yeast and mold. Today, you get preservatives which are broad spectrum, but these preservatives are also made up of these two to three things and come under one preservative. So these are all the, uh, like, you know, you have many ingredients like that. So Deepika Jalan asks difference between emulsifier and solubilizer. Emulsifier helps in carrier oil, solubilizing carrier oil and water, wherein solubilizer only helps in uh, essential oils because we uh, emulsifiers can take up to higher percentages of oil. Essential oils have a smaller, like, you know, the molecular size of them is very small. They are very, like, you know, uh, their size of them is like literally very tiniest of them as compared to um, carrier oil. And also we use them at a lesser percentage. So solubilizers help in solubilizing small amount, like, you know, small size of molecules, when emulsifiers help in large size of molecules. Um, Yukti Kanna asks, ma'am, can a shampoo be made by mixing water with shampoo base? No, please don't ever do that. The preservatives and all of the other ingredients are added based on that shampoo phase. Uh, if you add more of water, the chances of it going bad, the chances of it going because the preservative is used only for that shampoo base. If you add more of water, you might require more of preservative. You might require other different ingredients that works for that particular shampoo, which is based on the uh, total percentage of that formulation. So if you add another more of ingredients, the entire formulation is going to be destabilized. So I would never suggest you to add any other ingredient. All of your ingredients, whenever a formulator writes a formulation, it is like in 100 grams, if I want to use this ingredient, how much of the ingredient will I be using? That means you first choose your ingredients in percentage form, and then you go on to increase the batch size. If you add one more ingredient in this, the entire formulation is destabilized. What exactly is vegetable glycerin? Which category? I did not get the category, but glycerin is a humectant in skincare. It is basically got when, uh, when we add oils plus anything which is of higher pH. So for example, sodium hydroxide, it is a byproduct of saponification process. So whenever we are making soap, cold process soap, glycerin is one of the byproducts. So all of the vegetable oils, when we add something which is in high pH, that gets saponified and that is one of the byproduct of that process is glycerin. Now glycerin can be vegetarian or non-vegetarian depending on the oils or the fats that has been used to make uh, soap. Uh, what is preservative eco? It is a type of a broad spectrum preservative. Like I said, preservatives can be like different like EUXLK712, GeoGuard Ultra, parabens, methane, like you know methyl paraben, propyl paraben, all of these are type of para uh, preservatives. Have to identify the percentage of preservatives to add. Uh, this depends on what preservative you are using. The best thing is to ask for the SDS sheet. If you are wanting to formulate and if you are looking to use a new product, 
always ask the safety data sheet from your manufacturer or most of the uh, preservatives are between 1.5 to 2 percent but it is the manufacturer's duty or the supplier's duty to provide you with that two things that you need to ask safety data sheet or the um, certificate of analysis coa Uh, okay, so as you mentioned, there are different preservatives for different microorganisms. So if you're adding CO is, I think, uh, what is CO? It's uh, CO and EO in a product, then just emulsifier, no, solubilizer will do. Not, I told you, em essential oils, emulsifier, CO2, you mean CO2 extracts, then again, solubilizer, no essential oils. Have to preserve products without preservative, you cannot. Unless you break down the pH, which will not suit your skin. So uh, I know that you know there are lots of questions from you all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the next part. Till that time, um, we'll again have an, a question and answer session again. But now I would want to get into the claims side because I feel many of the answers might be also solved whenever, you know, in the second part, which is the claim and the myths part. So there are various claims that people claim to. And first of all, I will start as preservative free. Uh, somebody has asked how to preserve a product with preservatives. You cannot. If any brand or if any company is claiming themselves to be preservative free, then either one, the first thing is that product is only oil based. As I said, only products that contain water will contain preservatives. But any product, for example, your lip balm, body butters, any other different kinds of balms that you have, it doesn't have water. Nor you keep it in your um, bathrooms. You have you keep it in somewhere else where you know after taking bath in all you apply onto your skin. Body butters, balms, which are said to be anhydrous without water. So all of those products won't contain preservative. And people have taken this as a loophole and they uh, call themselves as preservative free, but their products are only oil-based. Unfortunately, only oil-based products are not suitable for acne prone skin or oily skin. And that is another claim or another misinformation that is going on, which I'll come to it later on. So this is the first reason how people can claim that they are preservative free. Second reason is they are adding preservatives. It is not that they are not adding preservatives. However, those preservatives are either phthalate free. There is something called I will. Um, this uh, request you all to mute your mic. Okay, sorry. So. There's something called thalates, which is like, uh, which are very unknown, like um, till now, but they are said to be one of those carcinogenic ingredients that you find in your fragrances. You nowadays, you get uh, thalate free fragrances. It is, it starts with P-H-A-T-H-A, -H -A, but it's pronounced as thalates. Uh, somebody in last webinar told me about this. So it is these ingredients which are really very uh, carcinogenic in nature. So before till like, you know, just a few months ago that these phthalates have come into picture, like fragrances, yes, people used to use phthalate-free fragrances right from a longer time. But these uh, this ingredient has been, this particular uh, chemical has been found in many of the skincare products which are carcinogenic. So many of the uh, preservatives also contain phthalates. Now, uh, any pro any preservative which is thalate free, which is uh, like you know whatever like which are which does not contain lots of other toxic based chemicals, which in the uh, like you know chemical society which is not presented as preservative. For example, salicylic acid. Now, salicylic acid itself is a preserving thing. It is a self preservating thing because of the pH level. Like I said, at lower pHs, pHs between three to all of these are self-preserving in nature. Uh, bacteria do not thrive in low pH uh, way. So if you're using any acids in your skincare and which has a lower pH, then they can claim themselves to be preservative free. However, 
as much as that they can claim themselves to be preservative free but they are harmful to the skin because the skin has its normal ph of 4.5 to 6 so our products also needs to be between those ph if not again you are burning your skin literally you are burning your skin you will get those stingy sensations or there are ingredients like salicylic acid even ascorbic acid to that matter all of these ingredients can be used as preservative but they are not broad spectrum they are not ready for youth uh, stability for shelf life and all of those so uh, all of these can come together they have two to three mixtures of these acids and all and they claim it to be preservative free but I would suggest never ever they are adding preservatives. It is just that under the claims method, under FDA and all, they are still not recogni recognized as preservatives. They are recognized as some other different ingredients like salicylic acid is used as actives, not as preservative. So they have again taken this loophole. Then, um, Okay, there are lots of questions which I'll take in the end. First, I'll finish the claims and all. Then comes the, one of the most important claims that I want to talk to you about is organic. Can anybody tell me over here what organic means? According to you, like I have seen so many people, uh, like the entire, in fact, I would suggest, uh, like I would say 70 to 80% of the people claim themselves to be organic based, like, you know, organic soaps, organic skincare. Can anybody tell me as to what, according to you, organic means? If you do not want to type, you can just switch on your mic for a minute and you can uh, talk about it. So Karama says using natural ingredients. Okay. Naturally derived. Naturally derived. Okay. Uh, Rakshanda ma'am oh. says organic is no pesticides. Okay. Certify it as organic. Right. Uh, who said that? Miral. <coughs> My name is Miral. Miral is the only person who is right. I am so sorry to say. Some people are right over here as well. Deepika Jayan growing without pesticides and chemical fertilizer based. But this is where you draw the line. No product which is organic, which is like all natural, like, you know, all organic products are natural, but not all natural products are organic. And this is one of the biggest misclaim, misinformation that people are using all of this while. Unfortunately, people have wrong misconception, wrong notion about what is organic. Organic are those ingredients that where the ingredients, the raw material that you are using. Now, when it comes to skincare, there are two kinds of raw materials. One are the direct herbs that you are using like herbs like say for example if you're using rose or jasmine or anything in your skincare product when you have grown that rose or whenever you have grown that jasmine you have not used any chemical based fertilizers pesticides or during that process of growing there are no toxic chemicals that are involved is the organic way now even in raw materials say for example your raw materials many of the raw materials have natural sources Steric acid, for example, if it's uh, sourced by plants, if, if it's derived by plants, other different kinds of uh, naturally derived raw materials, the raw materials from which it has been derived, that particular part while growing that, for example, while, while growing coconut trees, while growing other different kinds of palm trees, that no chemical fertility, like you no know, non-toxic chemicals have been used is only the time when you can, can when you claim yourself to be organic. Unfortunately, you cannot differentiate between a product is organic or non-organic until and only a person has the certification. There are only few certifying bodies which will test your product and decide whether that product is organic or not. If not, you cannot claim yourself to be organic or you cannot, any company which is claiming itself to be organic, I will never ever, I have asked everybody around me, surrounding me, never ever to trust that uh, until unless they provide you that authentic certification that this product is made up of organic ingredients and you can only and only claim or you can only and only know when the company is organic is when they can give you that, show you that authentic certification, USDA organic uh, certified or from France, there is this body who helps you to claim whether the product is organic or not. 
If not, you cannot claim any product to be organic. So this is one of the ways. Yes, you can like, you know, when you are, uh, for example, many of my uh, members, they can just grow herbs from their balcony and all, and they use that herbs without using fertilizers and all. But that is just part of it. Like, you know, in the entire formulation, whenever you are buying raw materials, your manufacturer has to give you that certification that my steric acid or my cetyl alcohol or this uh, gelling agent is organic because of this certification. If not, you cannot claim it. Then comes Ayurveda. Uh, somebody has a question. Yeah, sorry. Ma'am, can I speak right now or should I speak later on? I would suggest I, let I me just finish this and then we'll... Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you so much. And then comes Ayurvedic. Again, one of the... Like, it's like, you know, people are just using it in random ways. Just by using Ayurvedic herbs does not make your product or your company Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic is a philosophy. It is a science. Ayurveda, the reason why Ayurveda is differentiated from other modern medicines is because Ayurveda first takes, considers your body energetics, like, you know, whether you have a cuff body, you have a pith body, you have a butt body or the combination of them. And based on that, again, you have all of the and older medical systems, Siddha medicine, Unani medicine, Ayurveda, Western herbalism, all of this will first check your energetics, your body energetics. Then also the herbs have their own energetics, like uh, whether the herb is drying, whether that herb is moistening and all of this. And then they will add, like, you know, they will choose the right complementary herbs or pro products or Thailams in Ayurveda that you have based on your person, personal body. Just by using Ayurvedic herbs won't make your product Ayurvedic. So if a company, for example, Kama Ayurveda, today, if you have some time, go on to their website and just check. Um, I'll show it over here as well. If you want, I'll just show it later on. Just check their ingredients list and then tell me whether those companies are Ayurvedic or not. Half of the ingredients are completely, completely, completely chemical based. If it's Ayurvedic, you might want to use most of the natural things. So um, I again, claim busted that if you are using Ayurvedic herb does not mean you are an Ayurvedic company or does that, uh, it does not mean that that company is Ayurvedic. Then comes, I talked about preservative-free natural. That is again, another most well-versed use now natural to be very honest, does not have a particular definition per se. Like you do not, like, you know, in dictionary, when it comes to skincare dictionary, natural does not have a perfect definition. So anybody can claim anything is natural. But there are a few types of natural. One is normal, pure natural. Like, for example, carrier oils. Their chemical composition is not changed. Any product, the chemical composition remains the same. You can consider them as natural. For example, carrier oils, you just press that oil and you get the oil in a way. They might be getting, you might be getting it from seeds, from leaves, from barks and everything. But the chemical composition has not been changed. That means they are pure natural. Then there's something called naturally derived. Most of the ingredients that can be claimed as natural are naturally derived. That is when the main source of them is natural. Like they, we get it from nature. But they have been processed. Either they have been processed once or they have been processed twice. And then the chemical composition changes and they become a different product altogether. They become a different altogether. So your source, your main source becomes nat natural. But because of the chemical composition changes, it becomes naturally derived. Then comes something as synthetic natural. For example, citric acid. Now, citric acid is what we find it in our nature. But because of so much of demand that this nature cannot provide citric acid, if not like, you know, uh, we might not be able to provide that much of citric acid. The nature might not be able to provide the way it demands. So we um like uh we just make that particular molecule of citric acid that chemical in the in the labs and then we use it so you find the same chemical composition whatever it is found in nature you find it but it is just being sent like you know made it in labs now this is up to you as your own personal thing what do you consider like some people consider synthetic natural as natural some people don't so this is completely more of a personal choice that you have then you have um, 
then there are some claims like if you cannot read it don't use it very 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 important many of these influencers and all these just talk about the fact that if you cannot read the ingredients you do not use it this is where i want to talk to you about something called inki names inki means international nomenclature of cosmetic ingredients or it is like the fda thing that whenever you are writing uh, your ingredients list on your product it has to be under inki name inki name is the common name which is used throughout the world the reason why we say in the way we have botanical names in uh, botany like rather than rose you will have a botanical name which is common throughout the world similarly you have inky names for the same for example uh, shea butter it is something called by cannot even pronounce it like this is what happens like biotumin parki or something like that you cannot pronounce this you, you might not be able to read it but for example right, uh, dipaka says like water is aqua you won't you won't find directly water as aqua or you won't find water as water you will find rather aqua so most almost all of the ingredients that you find on your ingredients list are under their in key names and almost all of the ingredients you might not be able to read it but that does not mean that they are made up of wrong chemicals in fact most of like you know take any herb or take any natural ingredient to that matter you might not be able to read it but they are good for your skin so do not fall for that then comes another claim if you cannot eat it do not use it that is again absolutely wrong there are certain ingredients that are suitable for example essential oils there are only certain essential oils that you can consume it but you it is very safe to use topically so there are all do not believe in that that if you cannot eat it so you cannot use it that's absolutely incorrect there are certain ingredients which you cannot use it but you can use it topically so that is another claim that i would suggest not you to uh, suggest you to not take it seriously and then comes in today's time we buy skin care products based on skin type let me tell you a skin type the way we differentiate a skin type can anybody tell me like uh, Uh, as per you what are the skin types there are four types of skin that people talk about nobody knows a uh, dry oily normal combination perfect uh, i don't know who answered that but i'm here hi me here so thank you so much for that but unfortunately that is half this types of four like it's not even half it's just one fourth of what you have been going through your this four types of skin are just ba based on how much oil does your skin has and that is not the only factor to consider while you are either using a product or while you are using or uh, you are making a skin care product when you look at it your your skin can be dry and it could be aging your skin could be oily and it could be aging your skin could be dry and pigmented not like it could be normal and it could be pigmented and it could be aging as well it could have all of the three problems as well so your skin depending on this four things is very 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 limited unfortunately again this is because of the mass thing that has been taking place because of the mass production it was uh during this time like you know in the 1980s or something where in this four type skin types came into picture um by miss helena rubiston basically so she uh developed these four types of skin but this four types of skin is only very limited especially if you are trying to create a product if you are formulating a product what happens is if you become really very confused because these are the problems you are trying to solve now this is where one of the major problems also come is using uh, creams for oily skin and acne prone skin i have you seen so many people so many people either buying or selling creams that are suitable for anti acne 
which is really very like you are actually harming that skin more you do not give a uh, oily or acne based uh, uh, skin more of an oily product to them they already have lots of oil in them you require a water based product for them for example a gel or a water based serum or anything like that but you can also over here what happens is there is a cream which is antioxidant which is suitable for matured or aging skin and also for acne skin so you do not you cannot have that yes even if the oil so comedogenic comedogenic value before i used to consider it but nowadays i do not even consider that because the comedogenic value is still a question mark it is not something which is scientifically proved it is just said that you know only with few uh, like you know time and again how people have seen that but remember one thing after mass production came into picture almost out of 100 people 10 people will always find a problem with any of the product no product is suitable for everybody and so that is the reason why even if you are using non comedogenic oil for oily skin if that skin is if that product is like a leave on product that means the product is going to stay on your skin for the longest period of time i will never suggest you all especially acne prone skin it does not need it there are lots of amazing ingredients which are hydrated will which are basically based out of water and are suitable for acne prone skin so why would you want to use oil wherein your skin already has lots of oil produced so there are drying oils this is where uh, so i i'll come to that answer later on um as what ms rakshanda has said that there are oils that are good for acne this is where the energetics of oil comes for example there are certain oils which help you to dry away your skin your neem oil is drying in nature but having said that it is only a part of it you cannot use it completely into it also neem oil has an antibacterial properties but we do not find that neem oil in any of those products have you ever seen a uh, neem oil base because people would not want to use neem oil in their products because of its smell they uh, i have seen people using coconut oil sesame seed oil some of these oils are really 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 very irritating to an acne prone skin so i would not suggest you all to use that uh dipika t3 neem peppermint are all essential oils not your carrier oils so like i said there is a difference between essential oils and carrier oils then comes serums let me tell you all serum is not a different product it is basically you have your creams your lotions your gels your body butters give a different name to it that is what makes up your serum i have always claimed this and i always tell this your skin care products are 99% marketing and 1% product just because people were not able to like you know keep people like we as a human we would want to have new and new things and as a marketing company so my background is also advertising and marketing let me tell you that so as a marketing person i have to keep on you know giving out new products to you so that you are hooked to my brand you are hooked to my uh, like you know uh, my you are loyal to me basically so what sometimes you know what we do like you know as a mark like you know what i what companies do is the same product just the outer packaging is changed and it's sold um it is just like you know the same product is sold under different names so that way like you know like for example serums nowadays serum has become a huge thing but they are not a different product the formulation of serum does not change your products are basically your creams your gels your um lotions your body butter it is just the ingredients that um you add and these are the few only types of products that you have then give it any other name for example body yogurt body yogurt is not a different product again it is just a name given to a cream which is basically jelly like that is it so some of them are marketing based uh and serum is supposed to have smaller molecular size for easier and greater penetration that's what they claim but your cream uh, can also have it like certain ingredients needs to be penetrating serums are said to be like you know they are high active base products but why not other products can be high active base they are high active base it is just that to order to claim that serum is extra special to claim it at higher price we like you know it's like a claim given to it but there is not a different product 
uh, apart from that, chemical free. Oh my God, this is one of my favorite things. There is nothing like chemical free. All like we ourselves are made up of chemicals. Yes, there can be toxic chemical free or there can be, you know, made out of non-tech toxic chemicals, but there is nothing like chemical free. All of your products are made up of chemicals and you, in fact, as a person, as a human being, are made up of thousands of different chemicals. So if any company, again, claims to be chemical free, absolutely unto and please you yourself do not claim it to be chemical free. Um, team, so, okay. So pigmentation, this is again very important. I would like, you know, pigmentation creams, like creams or sorry, pigmentation based products. Now, let me tell you when it comes to pigmentation, your skin, the pigmentation is seen on skin, but 99% of the reasons are because there's something else going on in your other body parts. If your kidney is wrong, there's something wrong with your kidney, there's something wrong with your liver, there's something wrong with the other side of the body or in the other processes, it is just shown on the skin. It is just one of the symptoms of that is being shown to your other different underlying problem. Whenever there is a problem of pigmentation, very important. I will never ever suggest like, you know, many people like this is one of the common problems people have. But let me tell you, this is not a skincare problem in most of the cases. Like 99% of the cases, the skincare, this pigmentation is because of the underlying product, the underlying problem that is taking place within your body. I always ask people to first go and check from your doctor First, let them know that there is no problem. It is either just because of sun tanning, because of exposure to UVA and UVB rays, sunburns. And that is where you give the product, like, you know, a, a product for your pigmentation. But having said that, there is no, I'll give you a small uh, story. There is a person who is really very close to me and um, in my family, in fact, and for the longest period of time, uh, they had a problem on pigmentation, like entire this part was becoming black and dry skin and for the longest time like you know um, they used to ask me what is the problem we tried each and everything finally they showed to the dermatologist and you know what was the reason why the, there's pigmentation we would never guess it it is because of obesity obesity is one of the reasons also why a person can have pigmentation like I never could make a difference like we are not dermatologists over here we are not doctors over here we are just helping to take care of a person's skin in a day-to-day -day life for their just well-being. But if there is some condition that is taking place, if there is a problem that a person has, we are not entitled to take care of them. They first, the first and foremost thing is always to ask them to show a right doctor, like dermatologists or estheticians or normal general physician as well. So this was all about pigmentation as well. Yes, there are certain herbs. There are certain ingredients that help in lightening that skin. But again, it becomes a, like, you know, it helps in inhibition of tyronase, which I would not suggest people to use because then uh, our skin's natural ability to fight off the natural ultraviolet, like to fight off the UVA and UVB rays, can somewhere down the line stalls. So you are stalling the natural process of our skin by inhibition of this, uh, by using these pigmented products. So these are some of the few claims and myths uh, that I was going through. Now I have lots of questions over here. So I'll go through those questions. Uh, somebody had a question for me. Uh, if somebody can. Uh... Uh, hi, Maitri. Hello. Prabha this side. Yes, Prabha. Yeah, hi. Maitri, actually, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, pehla question to mera ye hai, jasse hum log koi bhi skin care ka kuch bhi product, maan lijiye ek body lotion hi market se agar lete hai. Thik hai? To usme they use chillanting agent as well or uh, stabilizers as well. To ye stabilizers kya hote hain, jo ye companies use karti hain aur inko hum log kaise use kar sakte hain apne formulation mein. Because ek issue mein ne face kiya hai, jasse maan lijiye maine ek body lotion hi banaya. ठीक है तो क्या होता है ना कि दो दिन तक तो उसका जो टेक्सचर आना होता है वो आ जाता है हम लोग जनरली यही मानते हैं अब मेरी आदत क्या है था मैथ्री मैं किसी भी क्लाइंट को मान लीजिए एक किलो का बैच बनाया और किसी भी क्लाइंट को मैंने सप्लाई कर दिया तो एक फिफ्टी एम एल में अपने पास एज अ सैंपल रखती हूँ जस्ट टू सी कि आने वाले टाइम में इसमें क्या चेंजेस हुए राइट right? तो मुझे क्लाइंट की तरफ से तो फीडबैक सही मिलता है क्योंकि उन्होंने तो यूज करके खत्म कर दिया महीने भर में लेकिन मेरे पास वो प्रोडक्ट पिछले छह महीने पड़ा रहेगा तो वो टाइम टू टाइम ठीक होता जाएगा 
तो ये अगर हम दो साल के शेल्फ लाइफ के ब्रांड के मतलब नजरिए से देखते हैं तो ये इश्यू आता है कि आफ्टर अ कोर्स ऑफ टाइम मेरे प्रोडक्ट ने अपना कंसिस्टेंसी चेंज किया ठीक है अब हम वन पीस बेचेंगे तब तो हमको ये इश्यू नहीं आएगा क्योंकि क्लाइंट हमारा यूज करके खत्म कर देगा बट अगर हम शेल्फ लाइफ के हिसाब से देखेंगे तो ये इशू खड़ा होगा तो फिर हम इसको कैसे टैकल करें ये एक क्वेश्चन है और दूसरा ये कि मैं कोल्ड प्रोसेस ऑयल्स घर पे ही बनाने का सोच रही हूँ तो उसके लिए आप मुझे कोई मशीन सजेस्ट करेंगे बिकॉज जो मार्केट में मैंने सर्च किया ना बोलते तो वो कोल्ड प्रोसेस है बट अल्टीमेटली वो जो उसका स्क्रू होता है वो हीट प्रोसेस पे जाता है तो आई एम एक्चुअली कंफ्यूज कि मैं क्या करूँ तो बस मुझे ये दो चीज पे आपका हेल्प चाहिए so to answer your first question stabilizers are basically helping stabilizing that uh, viscosity so there are different stabilizers stabilizing in viscosity and texture stabilizing as a preservative for a longer period of time stabilizing as a ph like many a times your ph might also increase and decrease stabilizer as a color so many a times if you are using natural products your color also might fade so there are different stabilizers that are used in your skincare product now let me tell you all one thing if you are really wanting to make natural products somewhere down the line you will have to you cannot have everything together so either you will have to like you know make like you know uh how should i uh, put it you will have to give up on some things like you know yes chances are that your product might not break per se but because of evaporation your product might become thicker in nature because your uh, water is not going to stay for the longer time especially if you have transparent bottles especially if you have if you keep it under the sun that is the reason why products are, are like wahan pe piche likha hua hota hai store it in uh, dry and darker place so that that evaporation the like normal evaporation does not takes place on your bottle products so you can have the labels which are covered over there which stops the uh, like you know thickening of your product apart from that um, if you are using natural colors now see here is the question if you are using stabilizers these stabilizers are used against natural products natural ingredients thus your product might not become natural so uh, the the great thing is that your like you know your clients are using it fast so always make it in small batches always give them in small batches but i would not suggest you to use stabilizers for all of these ingredients again if they will become fillers बट जैसे मेरी बॉटल्स ब्लैक है ठीक है तो वो ट्रांसपेरेंट तो है ही नहीं दूसरा मैं उनको स्टोर भी अपने वो क्या बोलते हैं जो हम लोग का ड्रेसिंग टेबल होता है मैं उसके अंदर ही उस फिफ्टी एम एल को स्टोर जस्ट टू सी कि वो कूल प्लेस में ही है तो ये दो इश्यू तो नहीं है मगर मैं स्टेबिलाईजर यूज करना चाहती हूँ ताकि वो लॉन्ग रन में एज इट इज ही रहे मेरे प्रोडक्ट कलर में विस्कोसिटी में प्रिजर्वेटिव के नजरिए से मतलब एक ओवरऑल जो होता है जैसा मैंने आज बनाया दो दिन बाद जो इसकी थिकनेस आनी है आ गई अब वो दो साल का मैं अगर क्लेम कर रही हूँ तो वो दो साल तक वैसे ही नहीं हो पाएगा नो नो प्रोडक्ट विल हैव दैट फॉर टू इयर्स व्हेन इट कम्स टू सी योर निविया क्रीम एज वेल लाइक आई कीप लुकिंग एट दी अदर प्रोडक्ट एज वेल ब्रांड्स प्रोडक्ट यू विल ऑटोमेटिकली सी दैट समेस्ट इन फैक्ट uh mm-hmm. i bought few creams from outside and i wanted to see how long are they you will always find that you know there is a little bit of water on top of it either the mm-hmm. nivea cream like some of them has been melted as well depending on the temperature where you are in some of mm-hmm. them have become thickened so for the longest mm-hmm. period of time you might not be able to store it for that particular viscosity or texture nobody mm-hmm. will be able to do that बट अगर एक साल का दो साल का नहीं देते अगर हम उनको मान लीजिए हम अपने लेवल पे दो साल का क्लेम नहीं करते हम बोलते हैं हम एक साल का ही क्लेम करेंगे चलिए ठीक है तो उस एक साल के क्लेम में भी मेरे प्रोडक्ट की विस्कोसिटी क्योंकि मैंने जो चेंजेस देखे ना मैत्री वो तीन से चार महीने के अंदर ही आ गए ओके so you need to have a right balance to if that is your product like you know then you can just check whether the you have added the right amount of emulsifier with respect to how much of oil that you have added and how much of water you have added and how much mm-hmm. of co emulsifier for example uh, if you've been using stearic acid or if you've been using cetyl alcohol or if you've been using uh, any other uh, gelling agents as a co emulsifier so that might be also like you know balance between them might also help you to stabilize your product ओके मतलब एक प्रोफेशनल स्टेबलाइजर यूज ना करें आप यही कहना चाह रहे हैं यस आई वुड नेवर सजेस्ट यू टू डू दैट दैट गिव इट इन स्मॉल बॉटल्स 50 ग्राम लेट देम यूज इट 
uh, again and again, but because natural products are not meant for that. So um, I would always suggest don't use all of this because again, you are adding in chemical ingredient, like, you know, not like another different kind of a uh, thing in here, which is synthetic. Okay. Okay. Uh, your second question, I am sorry, I forgot. <laughs> second question ये था कि मैं cold process oil घर पे बनाना चाहता हूँ तो कौन सा machine you would you suggest because जो Amazon वगैरह पे दिखता है ना वो machine जो है उनके जो वो होते हैं ना क्या बोलते हैं कील जो होती है that rod उसको heat करना पड़ता है तो the thing is that कि हम heating process से अगर दूर रख के cold process कह रहे हैं तो machine कौन सी हो I have to check this out to be very honest because give me like allow me some time like one or two days and you can just drop me a message on whatsapp and i'll check this out if we are finding another different equipment or if there are okay. other equipment uh, found so i'll let you know okay okay yeah thanks thank you maitri uh somebody else also wanted to ask me and then i'll don't worry i'll take the other questions as well okay till then uh Okay, what about niacinamide, polyquaterium tens or polyquaterium tens? So to be okay, I am not well versed with hair care. Let me tell you this. So when you're asking me questions about uh, hair care, I might be not the right person to answer you all because I might know the ingredients, but still when it comes to the physiology of hair, when it comes to the skin cell, when it comes to the science of hair, I have absolutely no clue the way I can talk about skin. So I might not be the right person to answer any questions with respect to shampoos or conditioners, like, you know, around 90 to 99 percent as well. It is only few of the things that I know about hair care is what I can tell you. So I am really very sorry when it comes to polyquaterium or uh, hair care, me, I might not be able to answer you. Uh, then there is a question about niacinamide, like, um, what about it? So there is one thing that I keep talking about is individual constituent versus using whole herb. Nowadays, again, this is during the Second World War and World War I, what we started doing is we started extracting individual constituents from the herb. For example, salicylic acid. Salicylic acid has been found in the herbs before. Like when uh, people started discovering about these herbs, they started realizing what was working in those herbs. So in willow bark tree, they found that it is because of the presence of salicin that willow bark tree is able to reduce their inflammation, reduce fever. So what we started doing is rather than using that whole herb as a holistic thing, we started individually extracting this individual constituent. And nowadays we have been using that as into our skincare products, vitamin C. Vitamin C, you find it in the peels of your oranges, apple, like, you know, lemons, grapefruit, give any uh, citrus based fruits will be able to find work, like, you know, vitamin C in that. But nowadays we are extracting just the vitamin C. Now what happens is our herbs are made up of thousands of such phytochemicals. There is a synchronicity that takes place within these chemicals. And that is how like it gives our nutrition to the body. We consume them, we eat them. This is because of the uh, synchronizing of these chemicals that affects our body. Now, if you just take one individual inst uh, constituent, number one, it is just going to give you the properties of whether that uh, of that particular phytochemical of, or uh, of that particular constituent. Apart from that, it has been seen when we just take this individual constituent, it is really very potent in nature. The other phytochemicals which are present in the herb helps in bringing the balance and gives you the entire fruit. So when you are eating a fruit, it is because of the balance of anything. If you are eating fruits, vegetables, any herbs, it is because of the balance or the percentage of these constituent is giving you the fruit of fruit. Now, if you just take one particular constituent from that, it is going to, like the entire balance is wasted, entire thing has been gone, you won't get another different properties or anything. So when it comes to any of the actors, be it niacinamide, which is B3 or B5, be it uh, vitamins, like vitamin A, E, F, uh, whatever, like there's no F, but any kind of vitamins, any kind of actives that have been used in your skincare, always I would suggest you to use whole herbs or whole herbal extracts rather than this individual constituent because these individual constituent requires like it's lots of potent in nature it just gives you one characteristic rather than that why not use the entire herb in that way 
um can coconut treat oil warts uh, can co coconut oil treat warts this depends on skin to skin this depends on person to person some people really find coconut oil drying in nature some people but i do not think it can treat warts in a way again warts is a different thing altogether i would suggest first to show dermatologist warts is not a normal skin problem per se so as a skin care formulator i would suggest first ask the person to show if you have it first show it to the doctor because many a times these can be cancerous as well this can be uh, malignant as well so first remove all the like the edit all of the things which are not there and then find the actual reason why you have warts like some of the warts are just dead skin cells so there you can use salicylic acid and ahas and bhs to remove that dead skin cells thing but if these warts are something else so you need to just make sure first uh, 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 about that uh then dipika jalan asks what about bioenzymes as preservatives also has ph level between 2.5 to 4 the skin's ph is between 4.5 to 6 if you add a uh, sodium hydroxide or if you just like you know balance it then the uh, bioenzymes might not work that much because all of these products work at a acidic nature so the properties of bioenzymes might uh, be lost so um people you have been starting using but you cannot use it directly you can use it up to 5 to 10% in your skincare products but then you'll have to match the ph between 4.5 to 6 and the properties might decrease i like i have started using bioenzymes in most of my products and i have been making uh, soaps since a year almost and uh, i see that uh, just putting 5% of different kinds of enzymes mixed together uh, mm. i am getting better results because the soap is getting cured very easily it gets hardened quickly and the ph is also good in fact the uh, yeah so basically i wanted to know how it acts as a preservative in different kinds of things have you experimented with the thing so bioenzyme just as a preservative might not work because in skin care products you will be adding ph like you know you will be bringing it to 4.5 to 6 so you're increasing the ph level of bioenzyme which is at 2 to 3 the preserving nature itself will go so as a preservative it might not work but they are really very good at cleansing and giving other properties of citrus if you are making bioenzymes out of citrus peels and all so that it will give amazing properties of that so it will work as an active not as a preservative uh many products claim natural and they use mica to color the product yes so here's the thing mica are natural you can find them naturally just they are not plant based so micas are basically minerals or salts uh, they are found in nature so yes they are absolutely natural the only problem when it comes to mica is the way they are sourced especially in india i think so in uttar pradesh uh, the way micas has been sourced there is lots of child labor involved like when they were like uh, people have been working in the most dangerous of the situations many of the people have lost their life and that is how we are getting most of the mica so nowadays we are getting something called fair trade mica wherein uh, the um, mica from where it is sourced the people who are working are like you know they are paid better their no their living conditions and everything is better and there is no chill like you know child uh, involvement over there so micas are natural the only problem with mica is how they are sourced high performing cosmetics contain actives like niacinamide would putting herb or fruit on the face be as effective absolutely it will be effective niacinamide is nothing but again an extract or the constituent that you find in your skincare products yes there is one thing that i'll tell you natural products might be able to work slowly but they are going to work holistically like um for example i okay here is the thing ab khana khao like you eat your food every day you give nutrition to your body or i'll give you two options one you get like you know amazing fruits vegetables and all and i'll give you a pill which gives you like you know your body requires 5% of protein 10% of fats 5% of cholesterol I'll, that it's in that one particular pill what would you choose will you choose that pill or will you choose those herbs and vegetables and everything that is going to give you amazing nutrition holistically so uh, the reason why we use whole herbs whole fruits is because it gives you holism in its nature 
wherein all of these individual constituent are just normal constituent which will just solve one problem per se for example uh, apple now apple contains malic acid but that's not it apple contains antioxidants apple contains tannins apple contains flavonoids all of these other properties also work on your skin but you can get malic acid aluxia as well but it is just going to do the work of malic acid only but if you have the whole apple you're going to get and let me tell you we all we are all living beings we live in um like you know in again synchronous uh, synchronized with each other we are like you know in a way a family so whatever is there present in nature is what our body also requires nothing more nothing less so it depends on your nutrition as well so that is the reason why people also say go local because whatever you have been going through similarly the plants and the herbs are also going through with the same local stuff so that local herb will help you more rather than the herbs that you find in probably us or america and everything like you know rather than using these exotic herbs go local because what local might be for you might be luxurious for other people also and that is going to work on you more effectively rather than using luxurious herbs it might not be used on your body does what is spf um so spf is a uh, sun protection factor i have written the whole blog it is a huge thing when it comes to sunscreen also yes let me tell you please do not make sunscreens at home please do not do that sunscreen is only a product wherein i would ask that requires a lab grade thing because there are lots of ultra violations like ultra radiations that are involved in this and sunscreen if if the sunscreen has not been formulated properly chances are that the person who have been using the sunscreen without any uh, lab based things skin cancer is one of the uh, second reason why like you know uh, sunscreens have been used for a longer period of time so please do not make sunscreen at home even if you are like i get people saying ki i have a formulation i have all the ingredients but each and every batch of sunscreen is tested lots of radiations like you know filters have been shown whether this particular sunscreen just takes in uv a rays uv b rays how many uv how much of uv a how much of uv b most of the sunscreens not even uh, is used for uva it is only for uvb so lots of things are taken care of when it comes to sunscreen so uh, i have written this entire blog on sunscreen i share it in the group you can probably read that or you will get like you know in order for me to share about spf and what is sunscreen and all you will require a back story for it so um I, it's going again going into the science of sun and science of sunscreen and all which i would rather like you know you can rather read it read it yes i want to i want to ask something regarding the same thing so if some uh, like a cream or a lotion is not claiming it to it says to be a sunscreen but it does have spf in it a normal cream uh, like spf 20 30 then does it act like a sunscreen no. or what uh... so the thing with spf is okay so spf is basically sun protection factor it depends on person to person again for example i when i go out in sun it takes around 30 to 45 minutes for my body to react to that sun wherein if you see my mom she'll just enter like you know she's outside and she'll become tomato red like so within 2 minutes she will be like you know um, be uh, being affected by my by the sun so spf is just that 30 spf is that gives 30 times more protection than what your usual um time is to like you know relate to the sun so for me 30 is 45 minutes into 30 so it is after that that is when my skin will start to react for my mom it will be two times into 30 so it is like you know after one and a half hour or after 60 minutes uh, she will react to the sun so it is basically that spf is the reaction of your skin uh, to the sun so spf 30 means it is 30 times it is going to uh, like you know stall your skin 30 times more than what it is supposed to be 50 times more than it's supposed to be so when somebody claims it to be 30 spf or 50 spf that is just that ingredient is claiming to be but that does not mean that is suitable for your skin and spf is just one part of the skin like you know one part of your sunscreen which is not even important per se how much of your sunscreen can absorb uva and uvb is more important rather than how much of your skin can stall that um, 
effect uh, from the sun. So it doesn't work that like, you know, even if they're claiming their SPF, like I also heard carrot seed oil, it's SPF 30. But if that was the thing, we wouldn't have sunscreen. Everybody would be applying carrot seed oil, right? But it is just the stalling of your skin's reaction. Okay. So I am sure like everybody who have been like patient enough uh, to understand and you've been over here. So thank you all so much. Now, before going, uh, many of the people, so I, uh, I am so sorry, I'll just share my screen again. Uh, so many of you know, I have this course, which I generally don't usually talk about in this, but many of you had questions regarding the course as well. So this was also an orientation. So let me just go through some of the things what I have actually built, uh, which are like, you know, so whenever people use herbs, uh, it's very important for you all to understand individuality of herbs. Like, you know, these days I have seen people that, you know, just add one herb, two herbs, make a product. Doesn't work that way. You need to understand if you're using rose and hibiscus, why are you using rose and hibiscus in your product? It is, yes, it is creative field, but it is also a scientific field as well. You need to know the reason why I'm using rose is because of its astringency because it contains tannins in this and that is what is going to change the skin uh, science or whatever it is. So the entire, um, sorry. So what, um, apart from that, uh, I'll just show you all what you're going to learn in the course. It's a huge course altogether. Okay. So this is, you have around 12 modules. One is the skin physiology, everything like, you know, from epidermis. Now, when it comes to epidermis, there's lots of things to know for you all to know when it comes to epidermis, which is your keratinocyte cells, your process of keratinization. That is why, which leads to exfoliation or desquamation process and skin barrier, the reason why you have dry skin and all. These are the things that you need to understand when you are understanding, wanting to make skincare products your dermis, then like I said, your skin barrier, natural moisturizing factors, acid mantle, all of these are very important for you all to understand when it comes to making skincare products. So first you'll be learning that. Then uh, there is something called rather than four types of skin, you'll be learning the BTSI method, which is like the, um, this is by amazing person, Leslie Bauman. If you want, you can follow her. She is this amazing dermatologist who have bought this uh, BTSI method, which is a uh, Bauman type of uh, Bauman skin type method, Leslie Bauman. So she has around 16 combinations of skin depending on pigmentation, aging, uh, dry skin, oily skin, resilient skin, and sensitive skin. So your skin can all fall like, you know, in all of the four brackets. So there are four factors which we'll be learning in detail. So, uh, and based on this, we'll be making product. Like I said, when we make products while choosing ingredients, it really becomes difficult. And we end up making wrong products for wrong skin type. So uh, then how do we assess your skin types depending like what kind of questions you can ask to your clients. Uh, then uh, understanding them in more detail. Like if you're having oily skin, so what are the oil, like how is oily skin caused? Like, you know, what is the reason? And based on these things, you will be actually able to choose your right actives. Like, you know, for excess of oil production, you will be wanting to use an astringent herb. You For dead skin cells, you would want to use an enzymatic herbs or herbs which contains alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. Dirt surfactants might help. Bacteria, antibacterial. And then we correlate this information and then create a product for oily skin. Because just using random herbs and random products for it does not make sense. First, need to know what is the problem, why it is caused, how is that problem caused, and then how can we solve that problem. Similarly, for pigmented skin, aging and mature skin, sensitive and resilient skin, then comes history and evolution. Like we have, like I said, we have been using these products right from, like we've been using natural herbs right from the beginning. So we can take some of the creativity from our ancestors, from our grandmom, how they use the natural herbs and all. And then how can we use that particular knowledge, add it to the current knowledge, and then how can we fuse it together to make skincare products? Finally, herbalism. We'll be learning about actives in skincare. We'll be learning about actions and energetics. Every herb 
has actions and energetics. For example, if you have cough, some people might have dry cough, some people might have wet cough. Now, when we go to a doctor, that will give you one normal pin. Well, like you know one normal pill for all type of cup but when it comes to ayurveda when it comes to using herbs we first understand you know when we are using whether the problem is drying in nature whether the problem is wet in nature and then like for example turmeric turmeric is an amazing herb which is amazing anti-inflammatory properties but it has a drying energetic so if you're wanting to use turmeric for its anti-inflammatory properties i would never use it for drying skin i would use it for oily skin which requires anti-inflammatory properties if i want to make a product for dry skin and requires anti-inflammatory properties i would use herbs like aloe vera so this is a little bit of the things that you require to understand when it comes to using herbs as well so we'll be learning these actions and energetics phytochemicals it is because of these phytochemicals that are present the extracts are nothing but we are extracting these phytochemicals so all this while water extracts, oil extracts and all of those things, it is really very amazing to know that the product like cucumber, which has night, like, you know, almost 80% of it contains water, but still we have oil extracts of that. So for me, sometimes it goes above my head as well. Can a fruit or something which has almost everything which is made up of water, the phytochemicals are water-based and using oil extracts for cucumber does not make sense. Rather, make an extract which contains alcoholic extract or glycine extracts which are able to extract both type of constituents. So we'll be understanding based on these phytochemicals, how can we make our own herbal extracts as well, like uh, tinctures, glycerides, vinegar infusions, water infusions, uh, essential oils and CO2, even in essential oils, depending on uh, the notes, like, you know, many a times people complain that you know they are not being able like you know the smell jali gai. like we use essential oil in uh, butter like in balms and all and then we add these like when you're making a balm if anybody has made a balm you cannot keep it outside when you bring down the temperature around 35 to 40 degree and then you add an essential oil Wo jam jayega. we add it directly when the temperature is really very hot and then we just complain that this this is not giving me lots of smell because essential oil loses its property when the temperature is between 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. That is where we use thalate free fragrances and other different fragrances or lip. Um, for when it comes to lip balms, we use um, flavors like uh, the baking. Whenever we use it in baking, whatever flavors that have been used, we use that. So we have to take care of all of these things when it comes to formulations. Then poultices, these are old herbal remedies what we used to use. Honey preparation, honey infusions also, uh, herbal baths, making dry, like, you know, salts and all. Then, like I said, you have two types of foundational ingredients, which are your carrier oils, your butters, and your water. Then you have aesthetic ingredients to know not much about it. Then comes functional ingredients. We'll be going more in detail when it comes to wax. Which wax should I use? Should I use beeswax? If I do not want to use beeswax, what other waxes can I use and how can I substitute those other waxes? Similarly, lipid thickener, steric acid or cetyl alcohol, preservatives, solubilizers, water thickeners or gelling agent, surfactants. Again, surfactants is a huge study altogether. Four types of surfactants, when and where to use them. Emulsifiers, water in oil emulsifier or oil in water emulsifier. Then pH and skincare. And then finally, once we learn all of those things, we'll be getting into the good, uh, again, there is a science of formulating as well. Like when you're choosing your ingredients, there are certain things that you need to take care of. What are the four categories of ingredients? Which <coughs> ingredient that you're going to pick, whether it is anhydrous, it is only oil-based product, it is water-based product, or it is an emulsified product, wherein it contains both oil and water. So uh, there is a science behind that formulation. And then we'll be creating all of these products as well, which is, and then, Choosing the right herbs, so if you have dry skin, if you have oily skin, choosing that right actors for that dry skin, oily skin for your exfoliation is like, you know, um, that is going to help you choose the right thing that is going to solve the right, uh, like, you know, uh, solve the problem per se. So this is all about what you're going to learn. Um, there are two types, which is self-paced, wherein it will be all videos and notes, and we, you can be a part of the community. So if you have any problem, you can drop a message in that community and um, either me, like my uh, the entire community is here with doctors, dermatologists, 
uh, entrepreneurs like skincare enthusiasts, house makers, and all of those. So there's this amazing small but amazing community of people, like-minded people. So anybody, they're all helpful. So either like me or uh, anybody in from the community can answer your questions as well, and you also become part of the community and you can also answer. That is how we learn. And apart from that, then there is life class. So there are two modules. One is self-paced and second is life classes for six months. So all of the details and everything, I'll share it with you all in the group. If you're interested, the thing starts on Jan uh, January 16th. Uh, so both of them, the self-paced and the live one as well. So I'll share all of the details. I'll also share my blog as well. So if, any, uh, if you want to know more about sunscreen and all, I'll share it over there as well. So you can give it a read that. Apart from that, do follow me on Instagram. And if you have any feedback, if you want to know about anything, uh, any other particular topic that I can go more into, like, you know, in details, takes webinars like that, I am open for it. So thank you all so much. Uh, are there any questions before me signing? Yes, ma yeah, ma'am, can I speak now? You yes, speak oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Ma'am, actually, a lot of skincare and hair care ingredients nowadays have... Uh, polycotonium 10 which is a potential carcinogen so mm -hmm. one of my dermatologists recommended me a shampoo for dandruff and also a, a face wash uh, by the brand ds pure but to my surprise when i read the ingredients it was written polycotonium 10 in both of the ingredients so how can we i mean uh, is there the, no one to stop these ingredients because we are using them in almost all the products and even they are being recommended by the dermatologist so there is no check or, I mean, there is no regulation to no, keep a check. There is a regulation. In fact, you should use it. See, this misclaims, that is what I'm saying. You might need it. Your hair, you're like your skin might need that. For example, silicones, polyquaterium 10, they are not bad per se. It is okay. just that most of the people, the skin of theirs are not suitable for them. It is not carcinogenic in nature. Now, what has happened is, or this might be, either you might be having a dry skin or you might be having a dry frizzy hair or something like that and that is the reason why your dermatologist must have uh like you know asked you to use that particular thing because your skin needs it we mm -hmm. tend to use it in the general day-to-day -day life then it might become a problem but if you have a skin condition then there are chances wherein you might to require you might need to use silicon based products you might need to use these products because that is when they are needed per se. So there is no harm in using them. And there are lots of studies. So if you want to know more about the ingredients, rather than doing normal Google research, there is something called Google Scholar. This is okay. the best way. Like, you know, rather than Googling it, there is something called Google Scholar, which will give you um, the test papers and the research papers and all. So you can do a little bit of research on that. But um it's all like if the ingredients are coming into market that means they are fda approved definitely for even parabens to that matter the way parabens we have thought them to be bad but let me tell you parabens are naturally occurring like in okay. berries and strawberries and other different products also you will find parabens the tests also that has been made are also like you know um, misclaimed per se so there is nothing wrong in using um, like all of these ingredients also if your dermatologist has suggested it. So we cannot, uh, so uh, ma'am, we can say that polycotonium is not a potential carcinogenic as, as such. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So what happens is, what is carcinogenic? That means it's a cancer main cell, right? Now this cancer and all, especially this are related to breast cancer. And how is it termed as like the estrogen? And androgen are the hormones that are found in our body, which are like, you know, they are said to, said to be sexual hormones, okay, which are found in our body. Now, all of these, some of the products help in increasing uh, this estrogen and uh, these androgen. But there are no studies that if estrogen come ho, like zyada ho gaya, to usko cancer ho ga. The claim has only been like estrogen zyada ho gaya hai and some of the people have cancer. So people okay. are now linking this high level of estrogen to cancer, but it's not necessary that they can be linked somewhere. And if you want, you can talk to your dermatologist. You can ask her probably if you can you know, give you a much more better or a natural version. But if she is suggesting you to use it, then always use it. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome.
Okay. Uh, will I get the certificate for the workshop? Yes, but let me tell you, it's not a government-based certified uh, certification. So it is more of a private certification. You will get lots of knowledge that I can tell you, but uh, not government-based. Right, as Mihi said, the percentages also that we use, it is at lower percentages as compared to the percentages wherein the tests and the claims are made. Even when it came to parabens, people use 15% of parabens with other ingredients also, which uh, might we might not even know they might be carcinogenic. So not always the claims that have been made are bad or which are wrong. So always do your own research. So having said that, thank you all so much. Uh, if you love the webinar also, please let me know. It would really boost me. If there is something else that you would want me to share or anything, I will share all of the details. You can drop me a message over uh, there in the group also. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Uh, take care. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Thank you for the amazing session. Thank you. Thank ma you, ma'am. Bye. Thank you.